So now I'm going to assemble the cryo-optic into the sample space. So I'll start with the base radiation shield, um, which has pins, so when you put it back on, you'll stay aligned each time. And then I'll put on the middle portion of the radiation shield, and then I'll put on the cryo-optic holder. So the objective comes pre-mounted in the holder. There's a brass locking ring that holds it in place, and then on the bottom is a brass aperture, and the heater ring that keeps the objective warm is right here. And we'll mount the harness to the cryo-optic objective holder. And this includes the heater for the heater ring, the thermometer on the objective, and then the backup heater in case the primary heater fails. So on the wiring harness, there's one pin missing, and we'll attach that to the point in the objective holder that is soldered. So now we're gonna install the base radiation shield. You'll wanna make sure that there is a thin layer of end grease between all metal to metal components. And once you put these in place, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that no wires touch. So you can look down and adjust if need be with tweezers, but we look pretty good here any touch will induce the heat load. So you'll wanna be really careful with that. And then you can reach through these top holes to tighten down these four M3 by eight cap head screws with Belleville washers. and you'll wanna make sure these screws are really tight. Then we'll put on the middle portion of the radiation shield. Again, as you put on the radiation shield, you'll wanna make sure no wires touch. And before I tighten that down, I'm gonna run the stages their full range again to make sure that the wires don't touch the side of the radiation shield. So the Z is probably the easiest and doesn't usually cause any touches. And everything looks good. Um, if you do have a touch, you can take off the radiation shield, adjust, and then try again. But since everything looks good, we'll tighten down the M3 by eight cap screws with Belleville washers. And then finally, we'll put on the cryo-optic holder. You'll want to make sure your Z-stage is all the way down so you don't run the aperture into your sample. And we'll also want to add a thin layer of end grease. So we'll tighten these screws down. Also, M3 by eight cap screws with Belleville washers. And then we'll plug in our wires. They're labeled user, user heater, and user thermometer, and those will be plugged into the corresponding connectors on the circuit board. So we'll plug in the user heater to the user heater, and you'll want the labels pointing out also. And then once these are plugged in, We'll put on the vacuum housing. The one with the windows goes in first, and it doesn't really matter if the wiring harness is touching the housing, you just wanna make sure that the wires don't pinch between the O-rings or obstruct the um, windows if you need the optical access. So then we'll put the side with no O-ring seal on the O-ring seal in the middle, and the O-ring goes on top. 
and then we'll put the lid on. 